Hi and welcome to Home Assistant but DIY version. Today we are going to DIY Zigbee Remote for Home Assistant. We'll start in 10 seconds. But before we start with today's episode, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for all of your support. If you too want to support the channel, you can do it by clicking join button down below. But also I want to thank everybody who liked, watched or subscribed to my channel. Thank you for all of your support. And now let's get started with today's video. This video has been sponsored by PCBWay. If you need PC boards, 3D printing projects or PCB assembly, you can always go to PCBWay. And I'll show you later on how I ordered these boards here from PCBWay. Some time ago, Alexei poked me and sent me a link from one Russian site called podcom.ru. And I really want to thank him for that. The goal for today's episode is to do or build this kind of remote. Hopefully, by the time this video finishes today, we will have finished product, maybe not the case because I still haven't printed it, but the device itself should be programmed and ready to be paired with the Home Assistant. In the next episode, I will show you what you can do with this device inside Home Assistant. And to be clear, this device, as shown here, has 8 buttons, but great thing about this project is that this device can also have 20 buttons. The PCB is very simple and it only has few components. Buzzer you don't need. LED can help you, so I would really recommend for you to solder the LED. You need module, this is a Zigbee module, switch buttons and couple of resistors, 1K and 10K. So this is the materials. You will be needing to order this board here. I will be leaving a link to this part down in the description of the video. Buttons and the number of buttons at the end will depend on how large remote you want to build. As I said, the board itself can be used for 8, 12 or 20 buttons. I have built, just for test purposes, 20 button version, but for the recording of this video I will be using 8 button version of this remote. This is how full board looks. We have buttons, LED, and on the other side you have to solder battery holder, resistor and the Zigbee module here. And this is how it should look when it is finished. Also, in the projects file, you can file the STL files for you to print. If you do not have printer, you can of course use PCBWay to deliver you case and the buttons. If we look at the size, when finished, this remote will really be a small one. First thing for us to start the project is to download Gerber files and remember this 1.2 mm. I myself made a mistake and I ordered 1.6 mm. The problem with 1.6 mm is that the perforation is there on the board, but it's really hard to cut or remove part of the board that you don't need. So don't forget to use 1.2 mm when ordering this board. This is a case, we will not need it now, and these are the Gerber files. So let's go to PCBWay and order PCBs. So let's start preparing for this order. Go to PCB Instant Quote, select Quick Order PCB, add Gerber file, and these should be the files that you downloaded from the link. They should be called keypad mini2.rar for archive. Open them and let them load. These are the images of the PCB boards. You can select if you want to order five boards or, for example, ten boards. I always order more boards than needed because who knows, I'm not good at soldering and maybe I damage some of them. The next step is to select thickness and don't be full like me and select 1.2 mm. And the last step what I recommend is to select the color of the PCB. I for this project selected black. Of course you need to calculate the shipping cost. For me this is Croatia. The default value is DHL, but if you are not in a hurry, you can also use China Post and have it mailed to you much, much slower. Let's apply 
and the total cost for PCBs is $16, that includes taxes, because yeah, in EU you have to prepay taxes, shipping and the boards themselves. Save to cart, and when you're ready, just finish your order. For the rest of the items you will need for this project, as I said, this is the Zigbee module, but be careful on what Zigbee module you are trying to buy. I will be leaving a link down in the description of the video to the modules that are used in this project and the ones that should work with this project. Also, you need a battery holder, small surface mounted LED, buttons and resistors 1K and 10K. And with the magic of video editing, here are the boards. So let's look at the box from PCBWay. <laughs> yeah, I did prepare things and open it up previously. So let's look at what we have inside. These are the PCBs. As I said, unfortunately, I did order 1.6 mm and the thickness of the board should be 1.2, so you can more easily break them out. But I did manage to break one part of the board, so I will be using this for today's video. Besides this board, you will also need resistors. This is 1K. 0805 and 10K0805 surface mounted resistor. The link to both of them is also in the description of the video. These are the LEDs, SMD LEDs, battery holders for CR2032 and a lot of buttons. I don't know how many I ordered, somewhere between 100 and 200, not sure but I did order a lot of boards, so I wanted to have a lot of spare buttons. Some additional things that you may need for this project, and if you do intend to build other projects for Modcom Room, I would definitely recommend that you have those, is, for example, this one here. This one is programmer, it's called SmartRF04EB, and I will be posting a link to that one in the description of the video too. And this one is programming jig. If you do not have something like this, what you have to do is you have to make contact between the programmer and these pins here, either by soldering wires or making some kind of uh, temporary contact. With this jig here, you just place it like this, you have contact and then you can program it. If you already have CC debugger, you can use this CC debugger instead of this Smart RF 04 eb so it's up to you. But this one I would definitely recommend because it makes programming of Zigbee boards or some other devices much more simpler. And I really do love it. When I was preparing for this video, I did solder this one here. This is hand soldered with the soldering iron. For the soldering, unfortunately, I was using very pointed tip and that was the problem. So I ordered this one here. As you can see, this one has a cut tip and it should make soldering of the components much easier. The needle type, nah, it doesn't work for SMD components that well. And yes, those 20 buttons, this LED here, battery holder, this module here, and all of the resistors were hand soldered with the TS100 soldering iron. But I wanted to improve on my soldering skills, so for the purposes of this video, once again, I will be using hot air soldering iron. And because of that, I need flux and I need solder paste. Now enjoy in a quick time lapse of me trying to solder the components.
Yeah, I hope that you did survive my butchering of the PCB. I do have to apologize. Unfortunately, my recording slash soldering setup is not that great. And I had to fight and go over the camera to put the solder paste to heat everything up. So yeah, it works. <laughs> okay. And the next step in this process is to program the board. If everything is correct, you should have something like this. Remember, your board can be either 8, 12 or 20 pins. So let's look at what we need for programming. I will be posting a link down in the description of the video. It's once again Russian link, but it can auto translate to English. We will be using this version here. So we need CC debugger. If you already have CC2531 stick and you programmed it yourself, then probably you have something like this. And this is CC debugger. But not being lazy, I also bought something else. And that else is this thing here. Or like this. Smart RF04EB. And this is the alternative way to program the board. When I say alternative, it's really the same. You will be using the same application, the same drivers, the same cabling, everything is the same, but the device itself looks differently and feels differently. The next thing that you need is Flasher Smart RF Flash Programmer version 1. And this is a Texas Instruments program. But if you click on this link here, you'll be redirected to the GitHub repository where you can download the version 1.12.8 that should work perfectly well. So what you have to do? You have to download and install this application. And when you start it up, you will see something like this one here. But the next step that you also have to do is connect the cables. I've shown at the beginning of the video, I'm using the programming rig. And if you ever intend to repeat programming process, I would definitely suggest that you spend a couple of dollars and order this one. On purpose, I ordered 5-pin version because most of the projects that I'm interested in require 5 pins. So if you insert it like this, or with a 20-pin version of the board like this, then the pins on either this programmer or CC debugger need to be done like shown on this diagram. First pin here called VCC going to this pin 2 here. Green wire goes to ground because green or ground is both first pin here and first pin here no matter of the debugger and so on. So please use this wiring diagram. When you finished wiring up everything, check, double check and triple check that everything is as it showed here. Next step is to hook up your programmer. Let me move camera and the red line will lit. And when you connect everything, so the board itself is connected, you should see in programmer this line pop up. Let me show you. If I disconnect, there is nothing here. And if I reconnect the board, the device is shown here. If the board, this one here, is not shown, you can press the reset button on programmer. Both this smart RF and the CC debugger have it. And we are now ready to program. But with what will we be programming it? Link in the description of the video will take you to the repository of the releases. For this, I'm using free pad version without LETV, PM3 or TL. TL stands for TouchLink, but since I'm not using any devices that require TouchLink, I'm just opting for the free pad version, the simplest one. Download this file, select it from the list of downloaded files, open, Make sure you untick retain IEE address and click on perform actions. The programming itself is very fast, but after programming comes the verification process. And this is it. The board is now programmed. You can unhook the programmer from the computer and also you can remove the programming rig from your board.
I also programmed this one. So the next step would be to insert the battery and look at the LED lights. And this is it, your board is now working. Remember that you can also print out the box and the cover. You can insert the board inside the box. And I have been using default I version of both bottom and top. I is for this keychain ring here. After you've inserted it here, just press fit here and yeah, you can even maybe glue it. And our remote is finished. I apologize for this video being lengthy, but I really wanted to cover all the necessary steps so that anyone can repeat this process. Uh, there are a couple of things I need to warn you. First of all, soldering the pins of the Zigbee module. Yeah, it is a bit fiddly, and the reason why I bought my hot air gun was just because I can solder them much more easily. But on the other hand, I did so far solder three boards in total, not for this project, but for some other projects, and managed to solder even those legs with the appropriate soldering iron and tip. Second thing, don't be afraid, it's really, really easy to solder SMD components. My vision is not perfect anymore, but still I am able to solder them by hand. On the other hand, using hot air soldering station is much more easier. And if you want a 3D printed case, but do not have a 3D printer, one thing that you can do while ordering the PCB boards, you can upload the STL files, go to 3D printing, select quantity, for example, you want five remotes, select type of the material, I printed in ABS, but you can print it in PLA, select your color, upload the STL files, and once again, the link is down in the description of the video to all the STL files, and then you can order both the PCBs and your new case for the 3D remote from PCBWay. And don't forget to subscribe, so you do not miss the second part of the video, where I will be covering on how to integrate this remote inside Home Assistant. And this little giant has a lot of potential and hidden secrets, so stay tuned for the video next week. But before I wrap up today's video, I really have to thank Jager once again for this, but also many other Zigbee DIY projects that he has released in the last couple of years. Thank you, Jager. Спасибо. And if you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or any previous video I did, you can always find me on the Discord server. A link, as always, is down in the description of the video. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.